Hey everyone, this is George Carlos and welcome back to another highlight video for three questions on educators that inspire. And today's focus is on the third question, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And I was so blessed to be able to, this past year, put out a book because of a teacher volume two, uh, Lessons from the First Years of Teaching. And it is an inspiring um, book written by some incredible authors. You can actually find it in the description down below. Uh, and the reason why I love this book so much is because if you look at the authors that were a part of this book, they have incredible careers. Some of them are superintendents. Some of them, you know, work in school districts all over the world. And when they talk about their first year of teaching, they really struggled. And a lot of times we are in that first year and we can't, we struggle because we can't see that we're going to grow, that things are going to get better. And you can see from their example that, you know, as long as you're willing to learn, as long as you're willing to grow, things actually do get better. But it doesn't mean that you don't stumble along the way still. And many of them later in their careers, they talked about stuff they struggle with, things that they had a really hard time with. I think that's what's really powerful is we kind of get caught up in this idea that we all hit a certain point and then we just know. But the reality of it is, if you truly become wise, you learn there's so much you don't know that you can always get better. And that ability to learn is an advantage that educators will always have, that willingness to grow. But the other thing I want to share before you listen to this podcast is that many of us could go back and talk to our you know, students in our first years of teaching. And we'd all apologize, right? Thinking about all the stuff that we didn't know. But one of the things I truly believe is that even in the years or even the days where you often struggle the most as an educator, you're always making an impact. And there's so many of my students who I've connected with in my first year of teaching. And, you know, they kind of hold a special place in my heart that first year teaching grade four in a small town in Saskatchewan. Um, though many of those students still reach out to me and they say I was their favorite teacher. And I'm thinking, oh my God, that was so bad. I had such a terrible year. And they still think that impact. And when you care about your kids, you can still make a huge connection. I remember a mentor of mine, Dr. David Pesek, someone I really look up to, and he was a mentor. He's one of those mentors that didn't know he's a mentor. I just looked up and listened to everything he said. He said something to me that will always resonate. He said, a teacher that is really great with relationships, but isn't necessarily great at curriculum will last a lot longer than one that's the opposite. And you can learn those things. You can learn pedagogy, pedagogy, whatever, however you say it, whatever region of the world you're in. But caring is something that's kind of innate. And I think that's what really separates. And you'll see that theme throughout in the guest room today. Uh, and because of a teacher volume two, I encourage you to pick it up. It'd be a great gift for, you know, the teachers that you work with in their first years. But it's a great read for anybody in education right now. So I I hope you enjoy the podcast and if you want, I'd love to hear some of your comments. What are some of the big takeaways from your first year of teaching? If you're on YouTube, comment down below. Tell me what was your big takeaway? What is one thing that you could actually go back and tell your first year teacher self? I'd love to hear your story and uh, share it with others. Thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Well, I think every first year teacher thinks they're going to do a terrific job from the beginning. And, you know, it's really different to have your own classroom right. as opposed to student teaching where you have someone there who's guiding you. And even if you have a solo experience, which we were required to do, that teacher is your supervisor is still there to to help you and to hmm. uh, mentor you along. So. When you're on your own, uh, you know, it's a whole different ballgame. I talk about, I mentioned in a blog that I wrote recently that um, on the very first day of school, um, and these are three and four-year-olds, never been in school before. So, you know, when mom drops them off, you know, they're crying and, and, and touching everything. Well, on the first day of school, um, a little boy went up to the calendar, started pulling off all the numbers. And I said... <laughs> Uh, no, don't do that. As I was consoling a kid who was crying, I suddenly heard the scream and this ran over and Eddie had bitten this girl and she was bruising. 
And he looked at me very innocently. He said, I told her not, I told her teacher said not to touch that. And I said, oh my goodness. Okay. Now in those <laughs> days, no telephones in the classroom. Okay. Right. And when the kids got on the bus to go home, my aide and I, we quickly got in our car and we drove down to that girl's house because I wanted to tell the mother, right? I mean, before wow. she saw the girl, I wanted to let her know what had happened. Right. And she was really cool. She, We had already <laughs> been to her house because we had done home visits. Mm -hmm. So she had kind of trusted us, I guess. And, and so I told her, I said, I'm really sorry, but this is what happened today. And girl came over and she said, let me see. And she looked and she said, ah, you're going to be fine. And <laughs> it just, I tell you, right. I've, today right. we would have had to report that, you know, right. and, and the parent might be very upset, but in that, at that time, she was pretty cool about it. And so I would say I learned a very valuable lesson that day, which was be the first to tell the parent when something happens. Totally, totally. You know, yeah. don't wait for the child to go home and give their version yeah. of what happened. Or anytime there's a problem, you know, be proactive and and take the matter into your own hands and tell them what happened. Don't hide it. And um, I think that carried me very well throughout all my years as a teacher as well as an administrator. Coming out of education. Like you, you want to have your rules, and I think especially because of a young, I'm, you know, I'm a young teacher. I'm like five yeah. years older than the kids I'm teaching. I want to make sure I have authority in the room, and you know, I thought authority was like having, you know, having rules and sticking to the rules. Yeah. And you know, as you go in the through the career, you realize most things are a little more gray, right? Like mm -hmm. so many things are gray with kids, and and you actually you can get a lot further by cutting a kid a break once in a while. And I think first year Chris was probably. One, right. you know, look, had some joy in the fact when kids, you know, there was penalties for late assignments and there was, you know, there was penalties you walked in late or you wore your hat in the classroom. You know, you know, this Chris Kennedy, 27 years later now knows, hey, you, every kid has a story when they walk in. Right. And so, mm -hmm. like, let's like you meet the kids where they are. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this with this question, but um, I feel like my first year teacher self could actually remind me and teach me a lot of things. Ooh, you because flipped that question. I like it. I well, because when I went into teaching, I actually studied economics and I was in economic consulting for a short amount of time for like a little over a year. And I was really unhappy. And I had tutored all growing up. My mom was a math teacher. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of always wanted to teach, but you know, Maybe we go a little bit against what like our parents do or whatever it is. And I just didn't go with teaching, but it always right. like was there for me. And then I found this job. It was like the perfect thing, perfect timing. And I went into that job thinking it was probably going to be temporary because I had studied economics. Like I was an economist and I just wanted something that was like going to bring me joy and happiness. And I said to myself, like, I don't care how much money I'm making this year. All I want is to be happy and to do something that really brings me joy. And I feel like I'm doing good. And my first year teaching, I had never taught before. I was teaching um, three different high level classes in the middle of the year. I ended up with a fourth different prep. Um, and I, I was teaching the highest level math class. I was teaching an, an honors algebra two class. I was teaching a programming class that I didn't even know, but they, that's what they needed at the school. Mm -hmm. And there was so much work. I was working all the time, but I loved it. I loved it. And I really was able to connect with my students. And I was just so happy because I wasn't like, it felt like I wasn't trying to like achieve any next best thing. I was just trying to do what felt right in that moment. And I was really leading with that, like, what is bringing me joy? And I had an amazing first year. Man, you, so to answer your question, here's, and I've been, I've been thinking a lot about this because I'm like, man, I know George is going to ask me this question. What, what can I say to my, you know, my first year self? Now, mind you, right, I was a coach, basketball coach, yep. teaching on the side, right? But what I would say to myself is that, man, teaching is like gardening. Right. Like I got this new new thing where I like 
I like plant flowers. I wouldn't even call it gardening because it would be a disrespect to those <laughs> folks who are actually really good at gardening, right? right? right, right. I'm just planting flowers, right? Um, but it's never the flower's fault. Like if the if the flower isn't doing well, like nobody's like, man, that's a bad flower, man. Like I, right. I can't. Right. Like you're always like, oh man, maybe it needs some more of this. Or you know, and now they have apps, right? Where you can take a picture of the flower and the app tell you, hey, give it a little bit more water, right? Mm -hmm. Um I wish that I had taken that approach much sooner in my career than I did. Mm -hmm. Right. Um because man, uh, and again, I I there's not there is regret right like I'll, I'll be honest like there are some students where i'm like man i wish i had had you when i was a third year teacher right because i'm better now and i know exactly what you needed and i realized why we didn't or why i didn't click the way that i wanted it to click um but man if i would have just had that you know like look no they just need a different they, he needs to be seated somewhere else right like right. or I need to, you know, you know, back then we had those, what are those overhead projectors that like, man, I, I need to bring in the computer a little bit more for this, right, for this right. student. Or I, yeah. It's okay for him to listen to his iPad right now or iPod right now, because that's what he needs to get. A, you know, it, it was just, I just wish I had done those things. And so, you know, what I would say to myself was, man, look, it's gardening. Look, there's no such thing as a bad flower. You know, like, man, it just needs a different kind of uh, a seasoning or right. soil or this kind of water. So that, that that's the thing that I will say. And that, and, and that is like, you know, I, I actually I think I wrote about this in Innovator's Mindset. Mm -hmm. And because and, I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that, because I remember same thing in my career. I, you know, early on, I'm like, you will learn the way I teach you. Like, I remember just <laughs> the same that in class. Like, yeah. no, 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 you're going to adjust to me. That's how this is yeah. going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And really kind of saying like, uh, I would, if any, if I ever said that now, I'd be like really bothered by it. Right. Like your whole, <laughs> and, and it's the same thing with leadership, right. You know, this with coaching yeah. too. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things, Hey, I know you're from Chicago, right? Like you're, yeah. you're I know you're a Chicago fan, but like one of the things uh, Phil Jackson did that I loved, absolutely loved. Right. Is that he actually, um, I always talk about this because in educators, like, you know, we'll buy everyone get the same book, blah, blah, blah. He actually yeah. knew each one of his players and he would actually buy them different books based yeah. on what he felt they needed, where they could go and like, how mm -hmm. much do you have to know to, but like he, his whole thing was, look, every player has an important role on this team. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, even though they're not Michael, like, and that, like that includes Michael Jordan, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Part of it too. like, and it's the, the person that's 12th on the bench. And so, I got to bring out the best in them. So my approach is different for each of these people. Kara, what's, what, what, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? That, that's a hard one. I will say my first year teaching, I had major teacher burnout and I about quit at Christmas because it was, okay, wow. it was, yeah, it was pretty bad. I guess one thing that I learned over time is leave it at school, <laughs> right. uh, like whether it's like the physical stuff or whatever, but, um, some of the emotional you can't, I mean, you carry those kids with you wherever you go, but um, just, you know, the test will be there on your desk in the morning to grade or, right. you know, the, or give some kids, give the kids some of it to help you. So like I taught kinder my first year teaching. And so, you know, have them help you with, um, you know, like if you're doing some type of activity, like let them help you prepare for that, like, right. and give some of the, give some ownership to them, not just solely relying on you. Like, it's not just a one person show, like you're right. a part of a team and um, in your classroom and a part of a team within your grade level itself. So that was one big thing that I had to learn my first year. Cause I, I was glad you weren't going to say, yeah, I almost quit in Christmas and I wish I could, I would have. <laughs> Like I'm, glad no, I I, I I'm definitely glad I uh, pushed yeah. through, but I, that was definitely uh, eye opening because I didn't think that would ever happen to right. me. And there I was a couple months in oh, and I, ready I to be done. I had a job um, right out of like, you know, I was actually not even finished my exams. I got a special exemption because they needed a teacher. Um, so I was like, I had the last three months I took over from someone. And I swear there was like a 30 minute drive. And I know this is not true, but like when I look back on that, I swear I drove like 30 minutes and just played like everybody hurts by REM and cried the entire <laughs> time. Like it was like, hey, everybody. that's how I just, I felt that was like, 
you know, it was like, it's hard. It's hard. And you, and you do take things personally when you shouldn't. And, you know, a lot of times kids are, you know, they act like, you know, goofballs because it's nothing to do with you. Something else is going on, but you're just the closest person. And a lot of times, you know, if you think about like our relationships, we're often hardest on the people that, you know, we know, uh, will forgive us the next day. Do you know what I mean? And that's, uh, that's a tough thing. Trust yourself and go to the essence, uh, learn and be inspired from people, but be you and be at mm-hmm. your core and find the way to always bring you to whatever situation you're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, I, I think a lot of times that that's a pretty easy thing not to do, right? We, we don't go with our gut. We get a little freaked out and sometimes it's, it's absolutely the, the worst uh, thing you can actually do. And so it's amazing that you went with your gut to build this brand new school in 2019. You stuck with your gut when things went a little bit wrong. So like, it's probably through this experience that you, you know, and it not, not wrong because of anything you did, but you know, because of what the world was going through and uh, you know, kind of just trusting that process. I remember actually one of my superintendents, um, uh, Dr. Marilyn Campbell, just absolutely uh, someone who's really had a huge impact on me. Uh, sometimes when going through uncertainty, she's like, just stay the course, stay the course, right? You got to kind of trust what you're doing. And it felt like once you kind of just, you know, felt that comfort in some of the things that you're making decisions with, I'm actually thinking about this and some of the personal decisions I'm making in my life right now uh, that are, are a little terrifying, but, you know, kind of what's the vision where you're trying to get to. And even when it gets really rocky to kind of just stay that course. I would say number one is every day you walk into that classroom realize that you're learning with the students. Yeah. You know, I think too often you go in there as a young teacher. Uh, I like to think it's different today um, and how we work with young teachers, but that you're going in with the information to fill the vessel that's sitting in the chair in front of you. And so going in with that open mind so that when questions come up, you're genuinely curious with the kids too. You're not frustrated that you're off topic or off task and not right. getting through the lesson that you're saying, you know what? Let's, let's find out. Let's look into that. Let's dig into that. And that's something as a, I was a science teacher for, for many years. I mean, so questions would come up all the time in a ninth grade biology class that I could have done a better job of learning alongside the kids and sort of digging in. Um, and that would be one. Um, the other one is, um, you know, when you teach the same class four or five times a day right. is before that group comes in, tell yourself, this is their first day with you. This is their first time with you. You know, right. because when you get the same question at two o'clock, you've already answered four or five times. It can be hard. Right. Uh, so that would probably be the other thing I would tell myself. I love that. I think I think actually, like as I'm listening to you, I think one of the best things we can do first is like, let's say you're teaching a biology class. It's not that necessarily kids have learned biology by the time they leave your class, but they actually have a curiosity and wonder that they want to continue learning biology after your class. Well, it, it's a blur. Um, so honestly, one thing I would, I would say to myself is trust yourself, right? I, mm-hmm. I had, I had observed teachers my whole life essentially. And, and a lot of the work I did in high school, I had the opportunity mm-hmm. to go to an elementary school and mentor there. Um, my university did a great job of getting us into school buildings in the city, you know, where I was and attended very early on in our Um, college career. And so I knew, again, I had so much passion and conviction, but not enough confidence. Right. And that's where I think I would go back to myself and be like, girl, what were you thinking? (laughs) Um, Because I would let that impede me sometimes of like, "Uh, I'm not doing this right. Or I would just be, you know, you are your worst critic. And I, I absolutely own that. And I'm still, you know, chide myself every now and then when I feel like it wasn't the best move. But Um, Just really knowing that I had that capability, even as a first year teacher, to empower those kiddos, to provide Mm -hmm. them, you know, a strong building block, a foundation for their elementary years to come and um, and owning that. Because, I mean, I think about that first year class sometimes I'm like, well, I hope they're okay. (laughs) I hope I didn't mess them up. uh, And I've connected actually with with one of them. Um, I, I was in the. H-E-B parking lot, because we're here in Texas, right? So I was at H-E-B parking lot and I had just, I heard this voice, this was a couple of years back and it's like, Miss Miss Guerrero, which was my maiden name. And I'm like, nobody knows me by that here. And sure enough, it was a mom of one of those kiddos that I taught in kindergarten, my first year teaching. 
Um, she brought the student over who was like, I don't know, to uh, just seem like a huge woman, like, oh my gosh, you're grown up. And we talked and they absolutely remembered me. I remembered her. She was going to college, going to be graduating in two. I mean, it was just like, yeah look, one got there. Yay. <laughs> um, but it was just, it's really just going back. And I would say this to my first year self. And I say this to my own first year teachers, you've got to have that confidence and really know that you, you this is what you're meant to do. And we're, we have you here for a reason. And, and that's what I would tell myself. <laughs>